let us come back we have learned i've given you a clear idea of crystal field splitting or crystal field theory we also studied what is uh, your uh, like how, would, how does it split in octahedral complexes and tetrahedral complexes so now let us come back and study valence bond theory very very important topic of the chapter because in this only you have different types of hybridizations we'll be studying or one of them will be given in the exam either they may give you the isomerism part or they may give you from your uh, uh, this in cft or vbt or one mark they may give you nomenclature let us come back and do this so valence bond theory basically was introduced to us by linus pauling okay yes so what does he like what is what are the important features of valence bond theory we'll see so basically whenever you're learning valence bond theory first important thing you have to remember is let us write the heading important features <clears throat> yeah so we already studied we have a metal metal has an empty orbital so ligand is going to donate a lone pair of electrons and together they form a bond that is what is a concept which we have been studying so that is the first most important feature of valence bond theory what does he see he says metal or which metal is that central metal atom this is important central metal atom makes or you know it provides an empty orbital that is what right so makes the makes availability of makes availability of d orbitals yes for what for the ligands to donate a pair of electrons for the ligands to donate a pair of electrons okay this is the basic thing now what happens now the ligand has come it has donated its pair of electrons after donating what type of bond does it form important ligands after donating they are going to form they form coordinate covalent bond coordinate covalent bond this is also okay yes this is also understood we have studied already now what else is important now suppose when the metal and the ligand are trying to form a hybridize to form uh, new orbitals right most important thing is suppose if the ligand is occupying right the inner end of this that means even the ligand is approaching this metal atom like this is like this and suppose this is your uh, d let us see now this is s now this is p like this now this is d s and p suppose when the ligand is coming and occupying or donating electrons right after hybridization if it is occupying the inner orbitals if it is going towards the inner end end of this or if it is going towards the outer end very important if the ligand is occupying the inner uh, orbitals of d that is we call it as inner orbital complexes that means if n minus 1 d we call it as n minus 1 inside if n minus 1 d orbitals are occupied by which one is occupying the ligand are occupied by the ligand i'll show you the hybridizations you will understand then these are called as inner orbital complexes inner orbital complexes suppose if it is occupying towards the outer end now uh, this is d2 suppose if this is occupying this one i call it as d2 s p3 suppose this is inner suppose if this is occupying sp3 d2 outer right that means if nd outer end orbitals are occupied by the ligand then i call it as outer orbital complexes right that means for example if i take <coughs> d2 sp3 is an inner orbital complex sp3 d2 is an outer orbital complex that is what it says next important concept what does it say it says suppose <coughs> after forming okay now the ligand has come metal has uh, like uh, it has uh, it has made available the t or d orbital ligand has donated coordinate covalent bond is formed they are hybridized together after hybridizing after everything is over suppose if you have left with unpaid electrons and if you are left with paid electrons remember important thing if it has paid electrons and if it has <coughs> unpaid electrons you have to remember this is also very important i'll be using it if it has paid electrons then i call such complexes as <coughs> 
low spin complexes and if it has paid electrons unpaid electrons then i call it as high spin complexes i'll be doing this with certain examples just see that means after everything is over if i'm left with like this lone pair of electrons everything is like yeah, i'm still left with unpaid the unpaid electrons if you find i call it as high spin complexes that will happen in the presence of weak ligands and if you find all paid all are paid then i call it as low spin complexes i'll be doing the examples also so basically this is what are the important features of bbt please remember this important concept this also i need this concept also for solving i need this concept also so let us come back and start solving different examples of your bbt